Hello everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to go over an example of how to create a heat map with QGIS. The first thing we want to do is to take a look at the data that we're going to pull in. So here we have some example data taken from Wikipedia. It includes the city, the state, the 2018 estimated population for each city, and the latitude and longitude. Then we took this Excel file and turned it into a CSV. To do that, you can go to File, Save As, and then for the file format, click the drop down and choose CSV. Now we've already saved this, and we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Now, quick note if you have to do some cleanup on your data, a few things you might want to do is to make sure that the data is formatted correctly. So one example would be here for the population. If there were thousands separators in your numbers, go ahead and take those out. It's also a good idea to try and make sure each type is the type that it should be. If it's a number, such as an integer, try to make sure that the formatting is correct. If it's a float or a double with a decimal point, again, try to make sure that the formatting is correct. And one way you can check that after you have converted it to a CSV is to open it up in a text editor. So here's an example of that. For this example, we're using Atom, and from a quick glance, our data looks okay. A couple examples of some things that you might notice that don't look right might include some extra commas like that, or if you see a number in quotes. And you might notice other things in your data that don't look right. And if that's the case, go ahead and fix those in your Excel and then resave it as a CSV. Okay, so now that we have our data and everything looks to be set up correctly, we are ready to begin to create our heat map. So the first thing we want to do in QGIS is to pull in our CSV data. One way to do that is to go up here to your toolbar and go to Open Data Source Manager. When we click on it, over here on the left, we want to choose Delimited Text. Then we want to pull in the file. So we'll go over here to File Name. Go ahead and click on the three dots for Browse. The file we want is on the desktop, right here. Then we can click Open. For the file format, we'll leave it as CSV. For the geometry definition, we'll choose point coordinates with the X field as longitude and the Y field as latitude. For the geometry coordinate reference system, we'll just go ahead and leave it as WGS84 EPSG4326. Now we can click Add and Close. So here we have our dots where each of the dots represents a city. Then we should be able to go to XYZ Tiles. And if you double click on the OpenStreetMap, it will go ahead and add the map. The first thing you'll notice when we added the OpenStreetMap is that the dots disappeared. So to fix that, we want to drag that layer on top. Okay, now we have our map and the dots representing our cities. Now let's go ahead and create our heat map layer. And to create our heat map layer, we can double click on population by city, or you can right click and go to properties. Over here on the left, we want to choose symbology. For the top drop down, we want to choose heat map right here. For the color ramp, let's choose magma. For now, let's leave the radius and the maximum value as is. For the weight points by, let's choose the 2018 estimated population. To take a look and see what we have so far, let's click Apply. Now you'll notice when we clicked Apply that the map disappeared. To fix that, let's go to Layer Rendering. And let's change our opacity to 50. Now let's click Apply. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we're starting to be able to see the representations for our density for our heat map, but it might look a little bit better if they're a little bit bigger. 
So let's change the radius to 18 and apply. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's click OK. And you can see here we have our heat map. So if we examine this heat map, we can quickly see some of the most populated areas in the United States. We can see over here on the East Coast, near New York, that's a very populated area. Same thing for the West Coast, near Los Angeles. Let's pull up our attribute table and do a quick comparison. So here we can see our data. If we sort this from largest to smallest, we can see that we get what we expect on our heat map. So for example, the highest populated city is New York. And by looking at the heat map, we can see that by the size and intensity of our heat map dot. We would expect Los Angeles to be next, and that is confirmed by the data in our attribute table. So this is a good tool to use if you want to see the overall population density for an area. Now let's go over a couple other options that you could use if you wanted to see the individual cities. Let's go ahead and double click on our layer. And instead of heat map, let's go to graduated. And the column that we're going to choose is the population. For the method, let's use color and we'll keep the color ramp from white to red. Now for the mode, let's choose natural breaks and we'll keep the classes as five. And now we can see each of the city dots represented by a color that represents the population. Now those are a little bit too small, so let's change the size and we'll go to symbol. Let's try four. And okay. So over here we have our legend. The lighter the color, the lower the population, and the darker the color, the higher the population. Let's go ahead and lower the precision just a little bit. And that cleans up your legend. Now this can be just a little bit hard to see. Because we can see over here on the west coast, you see a lot of white dots. And you don't see the higher populated dots underneath. Now one thing you might try to do is to change your opacity. But a better way to do this might be to use size dots instead. So to do that, instead of color for the method, we're going to use size. Now let's click Apply. And now what you can start to see is that for each city, the population is represented by the size of the dot. The circles are still just a little bit small. So let's change our size here. We'll make that 18 instead of 8. Now that looks pretty good. Now let's click OK. So by using size instead of color, we get a pretty good visual representation of the size of each city. So for example, the largest bubble is over here for New York. The next one we would expect to be Los Angeles. And other large cities include Houston, Chicago, Indianapolis, and Jacksonville. Okay, that's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.